We're back with our study of the Augsburg Confession. We're still in Article 1. We're on the second paragraph. And, of course, we're using the Dal Benti edition from Repristination Press, which you can get on their website. Paragraph 2 reads, They, our, our churches, condemn all heresies which have sprung up against this article, as the Manichaeans, who assume two principles, one good and the other evil, also the Valentinians, Arians, Eunomians, Mohammedans, and all such. They condemn also the Samosatians, old and new, who contending that there is but one person, sophistically uh, and impiously, argue that the Word and the Holy Ghost are not distinct persons, but that Word signifies a spoken word, and Spirit signifies motion created in things. So if Article 1 deals with, here's what we do believe about God, here's what the Scriptures do teach and confess about the Godhead, one God, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, then the other shoe has to drop, and that is, if that is true, then here are things that are not true about God, uh, and in fact, heretical ways of talking about God. So let's look at just a few of these here. Uh, the very first one, it explains a little bit. Uh, the Manichaeans, who assume two principles, one good and one evil. Uh, this is, excuse me, this is a dualistic system. Um, you have basically two gods who are of, of equal value. You have a good god and a bad god. Uh, an evil god, and they are constantly at war with each other. Sometimes the good seems to be winning, sometimes the evil one seems to be winning, uh, but really they are diametrically opposed, uh, and, and really they're polar opposites. Uh, also in power, in eternity, all of these sorts of things. So it's uh, it almost, what it does is it elevates the devil to divine status and say that God and the devil are always going to be jockeying back and forth for position in the world into eternity, and that's just the way it goes. Uh, so we condemn that because there is only one divine essence, not two. Uh, and, as we'll read elsewhere in the Augsburg Confession, uh, you can't attribute evil to God, at least if you're a scriptural Christian. Um, God is not the author of evil. Someone else is. Uh, two other sources, actually. I believe that's Article 18, if I'm thinking about it correctly, though. Uh, so that's Manichaeism. Uh, Let's see, also the Valentinians, who were Gnostics, uh, and that's a whole other Bible study, really. Uh, Arians, Arius was the guy who uh, uh, really set uh, the, the happenings of Nicaea in 325 on the order. What he said was uh, the father was God, and the son wasn't of the same substance. He wasn't of the same essence. The son was uh a semi-divine intermediary being. So the Son was still divine in a sense, but he was created. Uh, he was created before in the beginning of Genesis 1. Uh, and so this leads to all sorts of ramifications because then if Jesus is semi-divine, uh, then you're getting into awkward territory as far as, well, what is he? Is he God or man? Uh, and Arius wanted to make a third category, God, man, and then things that are part God, but not really man yet. Uh, so his famous slogan was, there was a time when he was not, etc. Basically, for Arianism, all you got to know is, Jesus is a creation, and it doesn't matter how you splice it. Uh, that would be today, I believe, your Mormons and your Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, and I believe your Oneness Pentecostals. Uh, but I'm not terribly familiar with a lot of their doctrine. So don't quote me on that. But, um, so, Arian, Arianism is where we get the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is the church's response to Arius, as is also then uh, the Constantinopolitan Creed of, from Con Council of Constantinople in 381. Uh, let's see, Eunomians. Eunomius, uh, oh, some people think of him as a hyper-Arian. Uh, he really had his own theology, but uh, it was Arianism on a couple different kinds of steroids at once. Uh, it's kind of complicated, but you get the picture. Uh, also one that's very apropos for today is Mohammedans. When we talk about Mohammedans, they're talking about Muslims. Uh, Muslims believe that there is one God, and his name is Allah, and that Muhammad is his prophet. Uh, the Lutheran confessions, confessing what the scriptures teach, outright reject this position. Uh, they are right, there is one God. However, that God reveals himself as three persons in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Something that they find absolutely vile and repulsive, uh, but... This is what the scriptures teach. So we reject the God of the Mohammedans because he's not God. And unlike some have said, even uh, in fairly large Lutheran bodies over the years, 
we don't worship the same God. Just because we all come from Abraham doesn't mean we all worship the same God. The Christian God is Father, Son, Holy Ghost, the end. They condemn also the Samosatians, old and new, contending that there is one, but one person, etc. Uh, the Samosatians said there is one God, it's Father, uh, and then the Word from John chapter 1, who is the only begotten Son, as St. John says, uh, the one who becomes flesh and dwells among us, John 1.14. The Samosatians, following Paul of Samosata uh, in uh, Syria, what they said was that God speaks, and that's the word. And then uh, the movement that he, the, kind of the kinetic energy almost, uh, by which all things live and move and have their being, that's the Holy Spirit. So you don't have three persons in one God. You have the Father, one person, uh, speaking, and that's considered to be the word or the Son, and then uh giving life to all things, and that life is considered the Spirit. All of these things, uh, here in the first article, the Christian truth rejects about who God is, uh, because they're all false. They're all either based on something outside of Scripture, like Mohammedanism, or uh, they're based on a twisting and a warping of Scripture. All of these uh, either want to preserve God's oneness, that there is one God, uh, and they have to try to explain the Trinitarian nature of God in a way that's appealing to human reason. And the truth is you just can't. Uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense that God is three persons in one God. But yet, God does not give us our reason so that we can figure him out. If you could figure God out, you'd be God. Uh, we also have to take into consideration something that we'll get to in the next session, Article 2 on Original Sin, that our reason, since the fall into sin, is tainted. Uh, and even in regeneration and conversion, it's still not what it used to be. Uh, so we cannot understand God. Uh, we cannot understand him in his fullness. We are completely at his mercy. Uh, and in his mercy, he reveals himself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, so as we look at these things that we do not believe about God, uh, we can also add uh, into there a modern one, which is uh, the Jesus-only people. You see this on Facebook a lot and, you know, uh, People saying, oh, I'm a Jesus worshiper or something like that. That, that sounds good. But in reality, um, it's, it's functionally, you know, you're making Jesus into the only person of the Godhead. And what about the Father? What about the Holy Spirit? Uh, that's why it's important when people ask you, well, who is God? You say, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's it. That's who God reveals himself as. None of these other things. Uh, as in everything else in Scripture, and especially here at the beginning, on God, uh, dealing with the Trinitarian nature of God, we have to maintain that the scriptures tell us who God is. God in the scriptures reveals himself to us, and we can say back to him and to the world what he says, but we can go no further, uh, because the moment we do, we're on iffy territory, and usually we end up someplace else. So this is why we say this is who God is, this is who God isn't.